Well, hello, welcome to The Voice Magazine. I'm Jonas Clark, the publisher. We've been talking about socialism, the utopian revolutionaries. I want to read something to you that I wrote in the magazine, and I want to talk about socialism. Listen, here's the good hook line. Will socialism destroy the America we've all known? And I think lots of people are really thinking about this. What is socialism? I mean, really, for the longest time, I mean, we never gave socialism any thought because, after all, we're America, right? I mean, why do we need to talk about socialism for? I mean, why do we need to talk about communism, socialism, all these other isms? But, you know, in reality, there is socialism that has already, that's, that's come to America, but now, man, is it being really promoted, and you and I as conservatives, we're really going to have to get into this and find out what is socialism all about? What is fascism? What are all these, what is this stuff? Well, anyway, we've heard a lot about it. And uh, I want to kind of talk a little bit about how does, it af how does socialism affect you as a Christian or a conservative? How, how does it affect us? Um, the short definition of socialism is this. Socialism is a political theory that advocates, um, and this is just some of the things, okay? It's pretty extensive, but it advocates government ownership of industry. Now, Really, that, that's what you'd call fascism, but I don't want to go there yet because I don't want to get too many words out here. I want to, let's try to break this down so we can understand it. Or said another way, government ownership in the means of production. Well, in the last few months, we've experienced an unprecedented shift from a free market economy, private ownership in the means of production, to a massive buildup of federal government ownership in businesses, particularly the banking, insurance, and mortgage industries. And I wrote about that in the magazine, and you can come over and check that out. But I want to talk to you about the utopian man. Ooh, this is something really interesting. This ought to really get your attention because there's a spirit behind socialism that believes in something. Because all these other things are a means to get to what they believe, okay? Here's an important truth. The spirit behind socialism believes in the utopian man. Listen to that word, the utopian man. The secular socialists believe in the utopian man are the masters of the universe. Utopian man is the perfected man are, listen now, the God man. Educated from childhood to believe in the evolution of man from savage beast to enlightened being, the socialists believe in the social engineering of the humanist God man. Have you seen all these experiments going on? I mean, you know, when I, even when I went to school, there was one experiment after the other. It's almost like one social experiment after the other. And socialism is entrenched in our universities and in our colleges, and, and professors are, are experimenting with the minds of our children. Listen to this. Much of modern socialistic and fascist ideology has its roots in the French, German, and Russian revolutions. Nicholas Bonneville, for example, 1700 to 1828, was an atheist and revolutionary journalist during the French Revolution. He believed it was vital to rally intellectuals to lead mankind. You know, we have that today. You know, there are people that think you and I are not smart enough to make our own life decisions. Did you know that? And so they've got to regulate, they've got to legislate, they've got to have this law, that code, this fee, this permit, because they don't think you and I are smart enough to get by because they are the intellectuals. That's a spirit, ladies and gentlemen, and that has its roots in the socialistic revolution that came out of Europe and now is trying to be imposed on you and I. You and I, so that because they think they're the intellectuals, they know it all, and you and I, to put it quite frankly, are just too stupid to even turn on the television or turn off the television. I mean, folks, you know what? We need to stop this type of foolishness because, you know what? I submit to you that you're a whole lot smarter than what these intellectuals think you really are, and I think they're about to find out because, you know what? The sleeping giant called conservatism in America is waking up again. These intellectuals, said Bonneville, would be the legislators of the universe. Wow, does this sound like, can, do, is any of this happening? Listen to this. And the protectors of the people. You know what? There's some protection that I don't want. I don't want somebody that I've never met trying to protect me by legislation or, or trying to have some code enforcement guy come over and tell me when I need to cut my grass. I don't need that kind of stuff. 
you know what? I think that we ought to have some personal responsibility and some personal freedoms here and tell these socialists back up a little bit. According to Bonifield, listen to this, listen to this. According to Bonifield, this is one of the founding revolutionaries in, out of the French Revolution. Listen to, what it, listen to the roots of this movement. He said, man is God. This is what they were taught. This is the, these are fundamental um, um, truths within the socialist movement. Man is God. Well, you, you and I as Christians ought to reject that immediately because we know we are not God. And he says this, and will one day become angelic. The utopian man, the enlightened person. And that's what they believe. They believe through education you can become enlightened. Well, you know what? If that's so, where is the enlightenment? Because all I see is an advancement of reprobate minds that's continuing to get crazier and goofier. I mean, next thing you know, we'll have somebody up in Little Plains trying to, trying to seed all the heavens to try to get the global warming off of us while we're down here wearing coats in the winter. I mean, something's got to stop, folks. We've got foolishness and distractions and smoke and mirrors and every other type of foolish thing happening all around us to try to get us off the real agendas that's taking place in America. There's a war in the heavens going on. And then he says this, he says, and one day they'll become angelic. This is the same lie that Satan used to deceive Eve. For God doeth know that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened and you shall be as gods, knowing good and evil. Folks, I mean, there's a lot of stuff going on. I mean, I wrote about this. I, you need to go, go to the magazine, see if you can look this up on the website, okay? We talk about the state as your source. You know, listen, that's what they believe. They believe that the state is source. And think about it, you know what? Our publicly, in our school, in our public school system, we have children that are, begin, that are believing that the state is supposed to take care of them, not mom and dad. Well, where are they getting that from? They're not getting it from mom and dad. They're getting that from the school system. It's a gauntlet for socialist education. Oh, I guess I shouldn't have said that, huh? We gotta keep that quiet, shh. They also believe in the equal distribution of goods. Look at this, state education, state education of children, a secular society. They believe in national, uh, a fraternal nationalism. They believe in spiritual, not religious people. I could go on and on and on with this, but I just don't have time. But the point is this, you know, there are people trying to frame our world that we've never met. And they accuse you and I, conservatives, of being hate mongers. Wait a minute, we're not hate mongers. What we want to do is stop the madness. We would, like you to, we would like people to know, wait a minute, you know what? We're married, we've got kids, we pay taxes, we work. We have something to say. So stop imposing things upon us that we've been doing for years that were okay, that were biblical, that were godly. And now all of a sudden, because you are an intellectual, that you believe in a, in a utopian society, that you think you know better than we do, that now you can impose all this with, and we're not supposed to say anything about it. Listen, thank God for you that are watching. And I, I know this, here's what we need to do. We need to pray for our country, but you know what? Prayer does not mean that you say a prayer and you do nothing. Prayer, yes, prayer is important. But you know what? When we pray, God puts a calling upon us to be proactive in our faith, to get involved, to be a voice, to say something. And I think this is an hour, folks, where we have, we have got to come together somehow. Maybe we don't agree with everything, but there's some things we can agree on. Let's take our nation back. Let's push the socialism back. Let's push this spirit back. I don't know where it came from, but wherever it came from, let's send it back. We can do it. God bless you. I'll see you at the same time tomorrow. Thank you for watching.